This is rated at 15 watts. And this is rated at 180 watts. Is the audio industry lying to us? Well, it's complicated. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about whether 15 watts is as good as 180 watts. On paper, this is a tale of two very different cities. The Schitt G-Horn. Into stereo, which means two channels, is rated at a paltry 15 watts per channel into 4 ohms. And an even leaner 10 watts per channel into 8 ohms. And for today's comparison, we will be using the Emotiva XB. Twos, which is an 86 dB sensitive speaker and is rated at 4 ohms nominal impedance. This is not an easy load to drive. Even on Emotiva's website, they say that the minimum amplifier recommended power is 50 watts. Well, 15 is lower than 50. Hush. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Quit being weird. I apologize for that. This is embarrassing. What was I saying? Oh yes, the Schitt G-Horn has an internal power supply, which means you don't need to worry about hefty, pesky power supply bricks. The ZA3 from Fozzy Audio comes with two different power supply options. I will be using the 48 volt 5 amp power supply and the power rating into four ohms is 180 watts, over 10 times as much power as the Schitt G-Horn. Bigger is better, right? Maybe not. Is easy, and I'll even say it, lazy to just buy products based off of specifications alone. And there are a couple of problems with buying products just on specs. One, you don't know if the manufacturer is lying to you. The rated power may not actually be the power you're going to get. Uh-oh. But this is not a new thing in our hobby. It has been going on with car amplification since the 80s. Either way, these companies give what the market wants, and the market wants to think that they're getting a bunch of power. So when a company like Schitt comes along and they're giving you an amplifier that's only rated at 10 or 15 watts, why would anybody buy it? Well, it gets complicated. This video isn't really meant to be a comparison between these amplifiers as far as how do they sound, more of a Mm, does the 15 watts have enough gumption to drive these low sensitivity and impedance speakers to loud volumes? But let's talk about the sound differences anyway. Below 70 dB, the Schitt G-Horn seems a little bit relaxed in the vocals. The ZA3 from Fozzy Audio, a little bit forward. But make sure you keep watching because things could change as we get louder. It's a little foreshadowing for you. Hard for me not to be like in the sound comparison game. I am about 12 feet away from the speakers and we are in a big room. So this is a test that is destined to fail for the low power amplifier. But that's kind of the point. I want to see just how far we can take this 15 watts in a big room. And at 73 dB, which is sound pressure level, how loud things are in this giant room 12 feet away from these speakers, the G-Horn seems to have no problem with these speakers. Even bumping up to 80 dB, the amps still have their own flavor, but we seem to be doing just fine. If you, on paper, so if we're doing the math, one watt at one meter should equal the sensitivity of the speaker. So for example, we have an 86 dB sensitive speaker. One watt of power at one meter should be 86 dB. In practice, it is 
Never that way. Maybe for a sine wave, but with dynamic music, you never quite get what you should get on paper. What do you say we stretch the G-horn's legs just a little bit? What's interesting is as I get these louder, the differences, the sonic differences in these amplifiers get a lot more apparent. And I know this video is not even supposed to be about the sonic differences. However, as the ZA3 gets louder, it becomes a lot more forward on the top end. So percussion, snappy snappersons, all getting much more apparent. The G horn, on the other hand, even at the same SPLs, continues its kind of laid back approach. And if anything is reminding me a little bit of like the Cambridge AXA 25 or 35, the extra caramel on top. So G horn I think is more neutral than the Cambridge, but more laid back, back to the left than the Fozzy Audio ZA3. Oof, this is interesting, this is fun. We're having fun. There is starting to be a slight breakdown. Maybe clarinet. Put it in the comments. Is that a flute? Or... I think it's a clarinet. I think that was just north of 80. The other interesting thing is I was just at Axpona with a bunch of my patrons. And if you're not a patron, you should check out patreon.com slash cheap audio man because it's a really awesome community. A few times a year we get together and hang out in person, but somebody had an SPL meter. And when I was comparing that meter to my phone, my phone seemed to be a little bit conservative, which meant actual SPL was about three to five dB higher. Which one is right? We'll never know. But what I can say is that whatever number you're seeing on my phone, it could be a little bit louder in reality. Oh. Okay, right then we were bottoming it out. We have found the limits to the G-horn and it is this song, The Main Event by Matt Large. We'll switch it to the ZA3 and we'll see how loud this is. Back this off and I'm gonna see just how far we can take the G horn before it starts clipping. Cause it was definitely clipping right away on not only the bass, but some of the mid range stuff as well. By the way, we're using the Cambridge Evo 150, the DeLorean edition, which is my new favorite hi-fi product. It's expensive, but you can change out the sides. So it's kind of like getting two amplifiers in one, using it as a preamp. You excited? You having fun? I'm having fun. Everything's fine right now. Pretty good. Still holding itself together. Bump it up, let's bump it up. Still keeping it together. Right there. Yeah, it lost it right there. So we were just on the edge. And it seems like when I push it, it all just falls apart all at the same time. It's really quite good though, if you think about it, that we have a 15 watt amplifier that's pushing things well above 80. And ironically, an amplifier that's rated at 10 times the power does play louder and it keeps its composure at a louder volume. But how loud do we actually need it? And in what use case scenario would you be using a desktop amplifier in a giant living room? I think the point of the G horn is to have a very good amplifier on your desk. 
and not in your giant living room like I have it today. But it wouldn't be any fun if we weren't stretching things to their limits. I mean, that's loud. Let's try one more song. I know we're not supposed to be talking about sonic differences, but what surprises me is the G horn, <laughs> a lot richer on the bottom. Sounds really good. And I think in a desktop situation, is actually gonna sound better, maybe? Because you want some bass when you're close up, especially at lower volumes. Really impressed. I'm glad I haven't had the G horn out for such a long time, but it is not embarrassed in the living room. And I think for most people in most situations with most speakers, a 15 watt amplifier, as long as it's actually 15 watts, it's gonna be just fine. <laughs> having way too much fun on this one. You really don't need a ginormous amount of power. If you want to get levels above 80 sustained, you're gonna need a little bit more juice. So the question is, is the myth that you need a ton of power busted or confirmed? Kind of confirmed. If you like this video, you're really gonna love this video. It's about the best amps from $60 up to $600. Thank you so much for watching.